Okay, so basically what we're going to do here, now this was attached to the compressor, the low side. So this part of the capillary tube goes into the filter dryer. Okay, so the filter dryer, because the flow is this way. And it comes out of the capillary tube and goes into the evaporator coil. It's coiled up a little bit, but that's why it looks longer. But capillaries are a certain length, because that certain length and certain inside diameter determine the flow of the freon, and that's what controls the cooling and condensing and so forth in layman's terms. Uh, so what we're going to do here, since this is the flow, and if anything gets trapped in there, it's probably going to be somewhere in the beginning, we hope. So we rigged up this little tool. This is a piece of 3 16 copper tubing, and this is a 1 8 process port. We've taken the Schrader port out of there. We're going to solder this, sweat it together, and then we're going to sweat it onto here, onto the cap tube, and then we're going to pull a deep vacuum on this tubing while we heat it to see if we can clear it up. Okay, stand by. Okay, so here we soldered our little tool onto the capillary tube, and it's this flow. It's going this way from the filter dryer through the heat exchanger and then out into the evaporator coil. So we've hooked up a vacuum pump, a two stage vacuum pump, and so we will pull a vacuum and we'll be able to see if the vacuum breaks that means we've cleared this restriction and this is only for purposes of testing because we cannot reuse this heat exchanger and many times you won't be able to heat the scapulary tube because it will be embedded in foam insulation so you have to take the insulation off but it's still easier and cheaper to do that and just put new insulation on it if you are able to clear it and to change the, um, the whole heat exchanger because you have to do an evacuation, you have to drain the gas out, you have to go through the, all the steps necessary to recover and then do all this work. So this is a, a faster way of doing it and so let's try it. So I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump, open it up. You can see we're down to it looks like 20 maybe 28 inches of vacuum and it may be just a gauge it may be deeper than that but um, so we open this up and you notice it jumped up because it sucked out all the air that was in the hose but it's still at the same inches of mercury, which we call a vacuum. So if there's a restriction in here and we can clear it, then um, that gate should come up. So stand by, let's get a heat source. Okay, so now we have a heat gun here. And we're gonna try, we'll keep an eye on that gate. Okay, after heating up the capillary tube for a while, we were able to loosen up the restriction. Or if it was, let's say, dried oil, it, it softened up and it's now pulling the vacuum. And the way to test that is to close your valve and if the pressure comes up, that means it's clear. Now you see it closing off the vacuum pump and it's equalizing through the cap tube which comes out on this end over here which would normally go into the evaporator. So just to, uh, for an extra precaution we're going to have one more little check so stand by. Okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to use a little bit of enamel reducer. I notice I put it in this little cap and we're going to put the capillary tube 
into the enamel reducer and let it flush through and clean out the pipe and come out through here. There's not really enough in the cap to fill the tube, but it'll flush it through. And so we'll open up the gauge, full of vacuum, and we'll know if this is clear because it will suck out that enamel reducer. You can see it's going in. So immediately we will shut off the gauge. We don't want that lacquer thinner to go into the pump. Let it sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll blow it out. And that's how you clean out a heat exchanger without changing a heat exchanger. Just a word of caution, the normal reducer is extremely volatile, like lacquer thinner, and you must not have any torch or anything electric or any heat source around when you're working with this stuff, because you could uh, create a problem. We seal that up, put this into a fireproof cabinet, and we'll continue. Stand by. Okay, one final test here is we've hooked up our pressure gauge to an air supply that has about 100 to 120 psi. We made this little tool here and um, we're going to run it through our gauge. We're going to pressurize the heat exchanger and it should come out on this end. Okay, here's a white paper towel. We'll see if we can capture any thing, sediment or anything that comes out of there. Let's see if this works. Okay, I can see some discoloration, possibly from oil, see, dissolved from the enamel reducer. But there's a really strong flow, I don't know if you can hear that, coming out of that cap tube. This cap tube is free and clear and if you ever try this experiment or actually use this in a real repair like we have done before here at Sub-Zero Specialists make sure you blow out that line and don't leave any re enamel reducer into the system okay that's it for now